Hey team, chemistry coach coming back at you for the third part of this series for zero first and second order reaction kinetics and deriving integrated rate laws, looking at what kind of plot we can make, what form of the concentration do we have to plot versus time to get a straight line, um, what are the units on the rate constants, all that fun stuff, right? So we're going to do second order reaction kinetics today. That's why it says second order reaction kinetics. We've done zeroth order, we've done first order, you could probably do this yourself, right? So if you want to just follow the exact same pattern I did for the other two videos, and let's and you could derive your own integrated rate equation if if you're like calculus, but if you don't like calculus, just boom, we'll go to the equation, right? <laughs> so again, let's take a general equation, right? Uh, a going to products with some balanced stoichiometric coefficient. Commonly, you might see a plus b going to products or something like that, but we're just going to focus on a single reactant to be able to do some of this mathematics. Otherwise, it can get a little more. You'll, you'll do more of that complicated stuff if you become a chemistry major. Um, maybe you'll become one after these videos. Or maybe you are one and see these videos and go, I'm not going to be one. <laughs> Who knows, right? So just A, going to products. Usually that, you know, if that a lot. And again, a lot of times you'll see these derivations in textbooks and on videos. You'll see whatever, where they just treat the stoichiometric coefficient as one. So you don't see this little A factor floating around. That's all right. whoop de doo Rate law again, right? The rate of that reaction will be the rate constant times the reactant concentration. In this case, we only have one reactant. But raised to the power of two, that's what makes it a second order reaction. Yay! Just like we did before, take that rate rewrite that in terms of the definition of a rate, which is the change in concentration over the change in time. But remember, it's a reactant, so you got to put a negative sign in there and one over the stoichiometric coefficient. So we've been doing that same thing every single time. That would equal K times the concentration of A squared for second order. Now remember, zero order, that was a zero up there. First order, that was a one up there. And second order, that's two. That's the only difference. But it does change the overall integrated rate equation when you're done because the integral will be different. Well, let's get the delta T on the right side and all the A stuff on the left side. So let's divide both sides by the concentration of A squared. So we're going to get delta A over A squared on the left-hand side. Let's multiply both sides by delta T to get delta T. Let's get multiply both sides by A and the negative sign. So we'll get negative A times the rate constant times delta T on the right-hand side. Now that's exactly, that right-hand side is exactly the same for zero first and second order. It's just a little different over here. First order, it was that. Second order, you just have the concentration. Second order, it's squared. So that will change things. So if you're a calculus, uh, you know, fanatic, integrate both sides for that and see what you get for the integrated rate equation. If you hate calculus, right, and you'd rather, you know, take a cheese grater and fillet your skin off there <laughs> instead of do calculus, that's fine. Don't worry about the next board. Just go straight to the equation. Let's do it. All right. How'd you do? How'd you do? I just rewrote that equation from the last board. So delta A over A squared is negative AK delta T. Do the integral from the initial concentration of A to the final concentration of A. Do the integral from time initial, which is zero, to time T. Let's do what we've always done before. Let's pull out the constants outside the integral, the A and the K and the negative sign. Pull those out. Uh, and what I'm going to do is instead of, you could write 1 over a squared, right, or a to the negative 2. Same thing either way. So let's just make it this way. So integral from the initial concentration of a to final concentration of a of a, concentration of a to the negative 2 power, delta a is negative ak integral from 0 to t delta t. Um, now the integral from 0 to t delta t is the same as we've always had. It's like the integral of dx, right? That will just be t final minus t initial, t initial 0, so it's just going to be t. But we haven't run into this yet, right? So if you're into calculus, it's that integral of x to the minus 2 times dx, right? And then I think I talked about that in the zeroth order reaction, where uh, that is equal to like x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus some constant c, uh, where in this case n is negative 2, right? For zero order reactions, that n was 0. First order was negative 1. All right, we're not going to get any log terms on this one. Yay! So if you do that, when you take that integral there, if you, if you work your way through, do the details of it where n is equal to negative 2, you'll get the negative of 1 over the initial concentration minus the negative of 1 over the initial concentration. So 1 over the negative of the final concentration 
uh, at time t minus 1 over the initial. So you get the negative 1 over or negative x to the minus 1, right, when you do that integral. Equals negative a k t, specifically t, final minus t initial, t initial 0, so we just call it t. All right, we got a bunch of negative signs floating around. Ew! I'm going to move the uh, 1 over a naught term to the other side, but that's negative of a negative, which makes it a positive, right? Those negatives cancel. So if I move it to the other side, that positive becomes negative. So negative 1 over a t is equal to negative a k t minus 1 over a initial, initial concentration. Let's multiply through by negative sign, right? So that becomes positive, that becomes positive, that becomes positive, right? So we get our final integrated rate equation for second order reactions is the inverse of the concentration of the reactant at time t is equal to a k t, and commonly a is just one, so you may not see that in there. So the rate constant times the time elapsed plus the inverse of the initial concentration. So this is great. If you know the initial concentration, the time elapsed, the rate constant, and A, you can solve for the concentration over some time. That's what we use these integrated rate equations for, is to look at time versus concentration. We can calculate the concentration any time along that reaction pathway, Ooh, or vice versa. Say in lines, you know, if we say we know the initial concentration and we want to get to a final concentration, and we know the rate constant in A, we can calculate how long to run the reaction and go, boop, stop it there, that's the concentration we want. Or if we know how the, how the times elapsed and the initial and final concentrations in lab and, and the reaction with A, we could calculate the rate constant. Ooh, so for zero order reactions, I think we calculated the time elapsed in that video. For first order reactions, I think we calculated the time, I mean the concentration after a certain amount of time went by. So this one, let's uh, mix it up. I want to do an example of each three. Um, let's give you the initial and final concentrations uh, the time elapsed and, and the A value, which is commonly one, but I want to get one where it isn't. And let's solve for the rate constant for uh, second order. I mean, you could do this for zero or first. It just, remember, in all of these problems, first step, what is the order of the reaction? Zero, first, or second? That will tell you what equation to use. Then you look at the data from the problem, plug it in, and oh, lo and behold, one of them will be an unknown. Solve for that one. Track your uncertainty, track your units. You're good to go, right? So again, in my class, I will provide this for you, but let's go ahead and do some plots, right? Just the zero and second order. What form of the concentration do we plot versus time to get a straight line? And then we'll do an example, and we'll look at units on the rate constant. But if you take a look, y equals mx plus b. In this case, your y-intercept is the inverse of the concentration initially. Your slope is a k, it's positive this time. That was negative for zero and first order, which went down. This one's gonna go up, so that's a real quick one. Second order reactions, if you plot the, the plot the inverse concentration versus time, you should get a straight line with a positive slope. That's an indicator for a second order reaction. Remember, zero and first order had negative slopes, and first order, you just plotted the concentration. Second, uh, I mean, the zero order, you plotted the concentration. First order, you plotted the natural log of the concentration. And second order, you plot the inverse concentration versus time, and that gives you the straight line. So that's a great way to tell whether reactions first, second, or uh, zero, first, or second order. You should take concentration time data and plot it. Boom, second way, look at the units on the rate constant. So let's go ahead and do the plot. If you want to do that ahead of me, have at it, and then we'll do an example. See you in a second. Did you do the plot? Did you do the plot? Let's write the integrated rate equation for second order reactions down. Inverse of the concentration at time t equals positive a k time plus 1 over the concentration initially. y equals mx plus b. So y is the inverse concentration. We'll plot that on the y-axis. Time is x. We'll plot that on the x-axis. So inverse concentration. I'll just do inverse molar here. Versus time. I'll do it in seconds, but that could be minutes, hours, and that, that doesn't have to be molarity. Whatever units you have. Um, so in that case, the y-intercept will be the inverse of the initial concentration, right? Boom, hits right there. And then the slope will be all those terms before t, uh, so a times k. And again, if a is 1, boom, it would just be the, the rate constant. So the slope of that line m, if you do a least squares fit, right? Plot inverse concentration versus time. Get a straight line. That's how you know it's a second-order equation. If you plot the inverse concentration versus time, you get a straight line. 
with a positive slope, and the rate constant would just be the slope divided by the stoichiometric coefficient, which is commonly 1, but if it's not, you have to account for that. Pretty cool, all right? Awesome way to tell reaction order. Plot con either the concentration versus time for zero order, log of the concentration versus time for first order, inverse of the concentration versus time for second order, which one gives you a straight line? What a bing, what a boom! All right, well, let's look at this plot here. We can get the rate constant from it if we want to, just from the slope. Like I said, do a least squares fit, bang. We're going to do that quite a bit for labs in, in my class. But let's look at the units of the rate constant, right? It's equal to the slope, right? K is equal to the slope, so delta Y over delta X. That's the slope. Well, the, the uh, numerator, delta Y, is inverse molarity. So you're going to have units of inverse molarity in the numerator over delta x in the denominator, which is time, in this case seconds, we'd have inverse molar over time. Or we could write 1 over, see the m to the minus 1, we just put it in the bottom, so 1 over molarity times second or concentration times time. Or you could just write them both to the negative 1. Inverse concentration, inverse time. So if you are provided, if you don't know the reaction order is 0, 1, or 2, and you're provided the rate constant, which we have been in the two, ex two examples that we did for 0 and for first order, I didn't give you what reaction order it was, but I gave you the rate constant. So you look at the units on the rate constant, right? Pretty easy. If you've got concentration over time, that's 0 order. If you've got inverse time, no concentration units, that's first order. And if you have inverse concentration, inverse time, that second order. It's a re Memorize those units on K. Going to be really helpful where you can, boom, that's first order. Boom, that's second order. That's zero order. Bang. All right. So we got that. Let's do an example using that integrated rate law equation. Um, and I think we're going to do one where, we're, again, we did, I think for zero order, we solve for T. I think for first order, we solve for the concentration after a certain amount of time elapsed. This one, let's, let me do an, do an example where we're solving for the rate constant given everything else. So just uh, easy to do. Just, you know, do your mathematics and work your way through. Let's do it. Here's the problem. You ready? So for the equation, let's say in this case, 2A goes to product. Oh, oh I changed the coefficient. No. Or I can do A plus A. But in this case, it's going to be 2A. So A is not equal to 1 for this problem like it has been in every other example. Got to watch out for that, right? If it takes 714 seconds, that's T, right? For the second order reaction to have a concentration drop from 3.21 molar, that'd be your initial concentration, to 0.9 molar, to watermelon, watermelon, to 0.94 molar, that'll be your final concentration. What is the rate constant? So we're solving for the rate constant, right? Uh, and again, anytime you have a kinetics problem, two steps. Step one: What is the reaction order? So you read through the problem and look if it's explicitly stated. If it's not explicitly stated, look for a rate constant and look at the units on the rate constant. Remember, the units on the rate constant for zeroth order reactions, right? Concentration over time. For first order, just inverse time, no concentration. For second order, it's inverse concentration, inverse time. So I don't we're solving for the rate constant, it's not in there, but it says for the second order reaction. Oh, it's way life is too easy for us. It was provided to us. Provided in the problem. You don't have to write that down. That in your head just, I know it's second order. So you just look through your stuff and find the integrated rate equation for second order reactions, which we just derived, right? And in my class, you don't have to use calculus to derive it. Just grab the equation. Look at all the data. I provide you everything in the problem or you should be provided everything in the problem except for one variable. In this case, K is not provided. Solve for K. So if you want to go ahead and do that before I uh, list it up on the next board, go for it. But you know everything you need except for K. And you should end up with units of inverse concentration, inverse time. That's what you get for second order. Do it. Let's see if you get what I got. Different ways you could do the math on this, whatever works for you, right? Okay, so here's our integrated rate equation for second order, because it was told that it was second order. So inverse concentration at time t is akt plus inverse concentration initially. Well, what do we have? We have the concentration at time t, right? That was 0.94 molar. We have the initial concentration, a naught, that was 3.21 molar. That was provided in the problem. 
We know the time elapsed. That was 714 seconds. Pretty fast reaction. And we know A was 2 because it was 2A goes to product. So the stoichiometric coefficient of the balance equation was 2. So we know A is 2 in this case, not 1. So I know this. I know this. I know this. I know this. I know everything except K. I can solve for K because that's what was asked for in the problem. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is isolate the rate constant. So that would be the inverse concentration at time t minus the inverse concentration initially. So I just subtract 1 over a naught from both sides. So I get that term here. And then divide through both sides by a t. So I just have, you can put that over a t or times 1 over a t, whatever works for you. So I just isolated that. You might have just plugged in some numbers, maybe solve for this first and plugged it in, however it works, right? Well, let's plug in our data now. Well, 1 over the, the final concentration is 1 over 0.94 molar. Let's extend that out a little more. Boop. Minus 1 over the initial concentration, 1 over 3.21 molar. So I just plug those in. Uh, times 1 over A, which is 2, times the time, which is 714 seconds. So I just plug my data in. Now watch out. We've got inverses here, limited by few sig figs. Then we've got a subtraction limited by largest absolute uncertainty, a.k.a. fewest decimals. And then we're going to divide through by these factors, which are limited by fewest sig figs. So this is a three-step problem to be able to track the uncertainty properly. So the first thing we're going to do are these inverses. Right? So I'm going to go 1 divided by 0.94 molar, good to two significant figures. That gives me 1.063 inverse molar. I just put molar to the negative 1. Uh, good to two sig figs, so I put that dashed line between the 0 and the 6. 1 divided by 3.21 molar is 0 0.31152 inverse molar. That's good to three significant digits, so I put that dashed line between the 1 and the 2. So three significant, so two significant digits there because of the 0.94, three significant digits there because of the 3.21. So that's my first step. And then I just did the 2 times 714. The 2 is exact. 714 is good to three sig figs, so I get 1,428 seconds. Put the dashed line between the 2 and the 8 to track my three significant digits. All right. Well, now let's do this subtraction limited by, you know, fewest decimal places. So this is good to one decimal place. That's good to three decimal places. Or you could go tenths place, thousandths place, go to the largest absolute uncertainty, which is the tenths place, or fewest number of decimal places, which is one decimal. So if I do 1.063 inverse molar minus 0.31152 inverse molar, I get... 0 0.751 inverse molar. Good to one decimal place, so I put the dashed line after the 7 there. Um, divided by 1,428 seconds, good to 3 sig figs. All right, now I'm doing my last step, the division. 0 0.751 inverse molar, good to one sig fig. Divided by 1,428 seconds, good to 3 sig figs. Well, fewer sig figs would be 1, so my answer is good to one sig fig. So I get 5.25 times 10 to the minus 4th inverse molar, Inverse seconds. So I just wrote the molarity in the seconds in the denominator here. Put my dashed line after the first five to track the one sig fig. And then that doesn't round up, so it stays as five. Oop, that should be an arrow. Those aren't equal to each other. It rounds to that. Oh, oh, oh we need an arrow there, not an equal sign. So that'd be five times 10 to the minus fourth. And here I put molarity to the minus one, seconds to the minus one. Or you could put it over molarity second if you put those into donor. Either way is fine, but notice the units on K, inverse concentration, inverse time. That matches what we know about second order kinetics when we did that plot. When you do the slope, delta Y over delta X, well, the Y axis was inverse concentration, the X axis was time. So it's inverse concentration over time or inverse concentration, inverse time. It all works beautifully. So what we're gonna do, now that we've done zero first and second order reaction uh, kinetics, let's do a set. I was thinking of putting the half-lives into each video, but it, expends, it extends the, the, the video time. I'm going to do a separate video just on half-lives. And what we're going to do is take zero first and second order and derive an equation from the integrated rate equation that relates the half-life to the rate constant. It's going to be cool. You guys are awesome.